Hi, this is Zena Krogadal, your American Dream Makers host. So glad you could join me today. I have an extremely exciting guest that will be joining us today, and I can't wait to introduce him. But first, I am going to play my intro video, so I will be right back. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, everybody, for joining in today. I have a very exciting guest, and uh, Ken Walls is actually the man that is responsible for me starting this show, American Dream Maker. So I'm really, really excited to have him on. So let me tell you a little bit about Ken. He is a number one best selling author, CEO of a web development and social media firm, and the creator of Grow Live Academy, which is a comprehensive course on how to successfully use social media, video, live streaming to build your personal or business brand and generate revenue. Ken's passion is helping people succeed. Ken also has a podcast called Breakthrough Walls, where he interviews celebrities, successful entrepreneurs who share their stories to help people get past influences that may be keeping them stuck. And Ken is a top 10% podcaster in the whole entire world. Here he is. Hi, Ken. <laughs> wow. I want to meet this dude. Sounds really cool. <laughs> he is really cool. <laughs> oh, Zena, How thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for being on. I know you are a busy, busy fella, obviously. I mean, top 10 uh, percent pod podcaster in the entire world. You are a busy guy. So I thank you so much for taking the time out to be on my American Dream Maker show. So tell yeah. us about yourself, Ken. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear. Well, um, tell you about me. I um, live to help people grow. Oh, hi, Anwar. Thanks for joining. Hey, Anwar. Mark Gassard. I see Mark Gassard in here. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, yeah, I mean, what do you want to know about me? Anything and everything. How did you, how did you get started? Um, I mean, what, what road led you up to doing what you do and what, I guess, what, what got you started in, in being a podcaster and starting all these wonderful businesses, successful businesses? Um, so I've pretty much been an entrepreneur my entire life. I've, um, gosh, at the, I grew up in, in a very poor family and, and I just, I don't know, seven or eight years old, I was out mowing yards and in the summer to make money and shoveling snow in the winter to make money. And, um, just always, you know, pushing hard to, um, to, to, to make it, you know, and, and as time went on, and of course I had jobs working for companies and I, I never really, um, I never really felt like I was a, a good employee cause I wasn't, um, I don't know. I, I got, I normally would quit a job before they fired me um, <clears throat> because I we'll get into to that other stuff here in a minute. But um, I just I've always been a, a I've always just thought, how do I how do I make money? How do I be innovative? How do I help people? Um, and and, you know, one thing led to another. Eventually, by the age of, I don't know, 23 24 years old, I had my own business and, um, just, you know, worked hard and, and figured it out along the way. I, I, I don't, I don't know, but, um, as far as the, um, what got me started, is that what you said? Started yes. podcasting. So in 2000 and, 13 or 14 ish, somewhere in there. Um, I hired a new sales guy that had zero experience in sales. In fact, he was a sniper in the Marine Corps and a buddy of mine 
who's in law enforcement called me and said, Hey, would you, would you hire this guy? And I said, for what? And he's like, I don't know for sales. I said, does he have experience? And he's like, no, he was a sniper in the Marines. And I'm like, well, dude, I don't need anybody killed right now. What the heck am I going to hire him for? And, and so, um, he, uh, he, he ended up coming in. I interviewed him good kid and, um, but he was green. And so I started searching YouTube for, um, just, you know, some sales training videos from Zig Ziglar or Brian Tracy or whoever. I was just looking for stuff to feed to him. And I came across Grant Cardone and I was like, who in the world is this guy? I've never heard of him. And I'm watching his stuff and I'm like, wow, this guy is really, really good. And, um, and so I, I ended up calling Grant's office, signed a big contract to get his, his sales training university. Um, I had to buy a minimum of five licenses. So I bought it for me, the new guy and some other people in the company, um, was about a thousand dollars a month for this. So, um, I, I started following Grant on social media and um, watching him do these live streams right from his phone on a, an app called Periscope. And at the time, there was only Periscope and another one called Meerkat that you could live stream on. And um, you're supposed to bounce in and out, by the way, Zine. I'm not oh. looking you up the whole time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Live coaching with Ken Wall. Yes, thank you. So you're welcome. So um, the um, so I'm watching Grant, and it, 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 well, I wasn't watching him because I wouldn't get an iPhone. I was the like the antichrist of Apple, and and I I just was like, I'm never switching to Apple. I'm always going to have an Android, and and I was not, I, I, I'm serious. I would have died on that sword probably until I couldn't watch Grant on Periscope because it wasn't available at the time on Android. So I went to Verizon, told my girl, give me an iPhone. She's like you. And I go, just stop it and get me an iPhone. I had 18 Android phones, 18 of them. I had all of my employees carried phones. I paid for it. And, and I was like, I, I couldn't believe I was getting an iPhone, but anyway, got the iPhone. I start watching Grant and, and all the while Grant's going, you got to use this technology, man. You got to go live. You got to do this. You got to, you, you want, you want attention. Money follows attention. If you want more money, you got to get more attention. If you want attention, you got to go live. And I was like, oh my God, stop it. <laughs> so finally I was like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go live. And so I call everybody that worked for me into the conference room. And I said, all right, listen, I'm, I'm going to go live. And they're like, okay. And I go, just, just everybody calm down. They're like, we're calm. You're acting really weird though. I'm like, uh, okay, get out of the, get out, everybody out, except for you, my assistant. I said, you stay in here. And then she's like, what's wrong with you? And I go, okay, you get out too. So I shut the door to the conference room. I turn on the live stream on Periscope and I'm like this. Hi, I'm Ken. I mean, I was terrified, 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 but I did it and I lived and I was only live for probably a minute and a half. And I'm like, oh my God, there's somebody on here. Cause I saw one person and I'm like, ah, and, and so I, I ended it as quickly as I could. And, um, later that day I was like, after my blood pressure came down, I was like, um, I lived through that and it was actually kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Let's try it again. So I did it again. And then I'm like, that was cool. Cause then two people showed up and somebody even said, hi, I think, I, I don't know. I'm, it's been so many times ago. I don't remember, but like I started getting attention and I was like, okay, this is crazy. This, this works. 
And then I, I started saying, I do website development and, and, and marketing and technology stuff. And um, if you need any help with any of that, reach out to me. And then somebody did. And I was like, oh my God, I just made a sale, made money because I, I the, the, it works. Oh my God, Grant, it works. And I'm, I'm, I'm messaging him. It worked. I took your advice. It worked. He's like, Hey, Ken Walls. Good job, man. Good job. I'm like, Oh my God, Grant Cardone just said my name. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like freaking out. I mean, I really was. And so, so then I, I just, I was like, you know what, this, this really works and I'm really going to keep doing it. And, and then eventually, Actually, I show on Grant's network, Grant Cardone TV, um, for about three months. And it just didn't, it, the timing of everything was bad for me and it, it didn't work out. So I had to, had to cancel that show. Um, fast forward a couple years later, 2018, um, I was, and I, uh, again, even though I didn't have a show like this, I was still live streaming all the time. I mean, there were times I would go live five, six, seven, eight times in a day, every day. Like I wouldn't miss every single day because no matter what, if you're a business owner or you're in sales, which if you're alive, you're kind of in sales. Um, no matter what, we all have something to say and something to sell. We have a product or a service that other people need. We have, we have the ability to solve other people's problems with our product or service, hopefully. And if not, then you shouldn't even be in business. But, but like, you know, I'm like, I, I need more attention. I need more attention. How do I get more attention? Remember, I, I owned a multi-million dollar company in my 20s where I had salespeople all over the place knocking on doors and selling stuff door to door residentially. And, and I was like, you know, um, that's a hard way to get attention. That's a hard way. And you get chased by dogs and it's no fun. Um, but so I just, um, I was like, this is unbelievable. Like you can just go live and thousands of people all over, all over the globe will see you. And then you can spend money and run ads to what you just did. And like, Oh my God, this is unbelievable. So, um, I just kept doing it and kept doing it. And then in 2018, um, we had made a really bad business decision financially. It crushed us. And I told my wife, I said, oh, my God, we're literally starting over. It felt like, I mean, we pretty much were. And I said, um, I got to I got to get more attention. I, I We need sales. We need revenue. We need cash flow. And, and I, I got to figure this out. And she goes, well, figure it out. And I'm like, okay, well, I can cold call. What? Who wants to call? I didn't want to cold call. I call, I can, I, I'm really good at it too, but I hate doing it. Um, anybody that says oh, I love cold calling. I think they would lie to you about other stuff too. Um, but <laughs> but you know, I, I don't know there. I guess there's people that like it. Me personally, I don't like it. Um, so I could do that or I could just go crazy with live streaming and doing a show and starting my own show in 2018. And so I told my wife, I'm going to start a show. And she goes, awesome. What do you, what do you, what are you going to do? I go, I'm going to interview celebrities. She goes, do you know any? And I'm like, no, but I'm going to start. I, I know Jeffrey Gittimer, the little red book of selling. I'm going to, I'm going to start with him. Will he do it? I said, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to ask. And, and so um, she goes, what are you going to call it? And I go getting unstuck. I have a feeling if I get enough people to tell me how they got unstuck, we'll get unstuck. She goes, why wouldn't you use your last name and call it Breakthrough Walls? And I go, wow. that's pretty smart. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll call it Breakthrough Walls. And so that's the name of my show today. That was five years ago this month. Five years wow. ago this month. Um, I forget. I got to look up the exact date. I think it was like April 24th. Um, but. Jen Gittimer, Jeffrey's wife, <clears throat> was my very first guest. I get on and I'm like, we're live. Hi. 
Um, I have Jen Gettimer on with me today. Jen, say hi. She's like, hi, everybody. And I'm like, I had no clue. I had no intro video. I hadn't, I, I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, but you know, along the way you adjust your sales and you, you keep going. And eventually I looked it up last week and I'm like, holy crap. Or two weeks ago, my, my podcast is in the top 10% globally. As far as, you know, the podcast listeners, like the number of listens that I get, um, it's in the top 10%. John Lee Dumas, uh, Jill is an, is amazing. I am a lucky dude. Yeah, um, you are. And, you know, John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneurs on Fire was on my show. And he's always in the top one to five in the world, like podcasters. Like his podcast is normally in number one two, three, something like that. Any, any, at any given time. And, um, <laughs> Julie, that would not be fun. Um, that definitely wouldn't be fun. What Julie just said, but yeah. the, the, um, John was on, he goes, dude, how many of these have you done? And I said, you're like number 320, I think. And he goes, and they're all live. And I go, yeah. And he goes, dude, you realize that puts you in the top 1% in the world of all podcasters? I go, what? No. And he goes, dude, people give up when they before they ever get to 50 episodes. Wow. Now I've done over 500, um, which is just unbelievable to me. So, you know, that's that's how I, it all got started for me, getting into the, the podcasting game and the um, live show like this. And um, I have it on every podcast network in the world. Um, when I go, when I do this, I, I, I'm live on, on 10 different platforms. And so, yeah. Wow. That, that is pretty amazing. I mean, that was what, too many yeah. details, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great because I think for so many of us, we, well, I know for sure I was scared out of my wits. And, uh, so I'm glad to hear that you were really scared too in the beginning. So it gives, it gives people like me a lot of hope. So I'm really glad you shared that. And I thank you guys. I just want to shout out. Thank you so much for being on here. Uh, Jose, Ursula, Carol, Julie, uh, all of you guys. Thank you so much for being on here. Ken is um, uh, pretty amazing and obviously has been through so much. So, so glad that he would could join us today and share some of that uh, insight and experience. And so, Ken, you talked about how, you know, in 2018, uh, you had you had a very successful business and then uh, you ended up losing it. And no, that I didn't I didn't lose the business. I lost a ton of money and time and okay. clients. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. So so many people have probably been there and experienced some some of the lows in life. Right. Yeah. So what would your encouragement be to those that may be experiencing it now or feeling like they're on the brink of, of, of a failing business or something that, you know, hasn't, uh, hasn't come into fruition the way that they imagined it. Um, change the story you're telling yourself. For me, um, for at least two years, if not more, I was telling myself this crazy story about how bad things were, how bad this, you know, person had done me and all these crazy things. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, if we learn how to take responsibility, 100% responsibility for everything in our lives, I love you too, Lori. You're amazing. Me, me too. Um, but taking responsibility for every single outcome. There's a, there's a book that um, Jack Canfield and Janet Switzer wrote called The Success Principles. The very first principle out of 67 principles in that book, or 60, yeah, 60, I think it's 67. Um, the very first one is take 100% responsibility for everything in your life. Every single outcome is your fault. And there are people that are like, yeah, but I was a victim of 
still your fault. If you take responsibility, well, what about when I was rear-ended at that traffic light? Could you have left your house earlier? Could you have left your house earlier to, to get to where you were going? Maybe you would have avoided that. All I'm saying is, if you look at life through the lens of I am responsible and you don't be a victim. And that's where I was. I played the victim card in my head. The story I was telling myself for a couple of years back then was, was that, and I've been there other times too, but once you drop the victim card and you take responsibility and you change the story, you reframe the story um, I had an unbelievable guest on my show yesterday. I encourage everybody to go watch it. His name is Igor, and I can't say his last name without looking at it. Um, Igor was, I, I mean, freaking unbelievable. Like, just absolutely unbelievable. And he's one, one he's a, a multi-millionaire email marketer. That's the only, he... He does email marketing and he teaches people how to build their lists and affiliate networks and stuff. I mean, it's an, it was unbelievable, but he talked about this at towards the end. You know, if, if you change the way that you're the story that you're telling yourself about your situation, you can change your situation really quickly, but you have to have, the story has to change and then it has to convert into a feeling like you've got to really, really feel it. You've got <laughs> Jose. That's right. Don't be a little B, but you have to, you have to feel it. Um, I had last night, I had the unbelievable, the inimitable Don green, the CEO of the Napoleon Hill foundation. I did an Amazon live with him last night. He's going to be on my, my breakthrough walls show. Um, on Friday, he is absolutely an amazing human being. And he was talking about the same exact thing. He was talking about how you have to change the story that you're telling yourself and you have to put massive action in. There are times when I'm working so hard that I look up and I'm like, um, how did it become two 30 in the morning? I got to get to sleep. You know, I mean, it just happens. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and it happens daily for me. I don't stop. I keep going. I keep pushing because what else is there? What else? I, I, I mean, and I'm not talking about, I, you know, yes, you have to have family time. You have to have all of that. Um, but what, what else what's the alternative sitting on the couch watching Netflix and then crying and bitching about pardon my language, complaining about um, your business is suffering and failing, or you're not making enough money. How about get rid of Netflix? How about get rid of, or, or focus more on your business until you can afford to watch Netflix. And I'm not at that point where, I mean, I do, I watch things once in a while, but I don't, that's not my every day at all. And anybody's welcome to ask my wife. I, I work my butt off. You can't like, you can change the story in your head, but the reality is nothing changes until you start taking action. So if you're in a, in a position of, um, you know, I love what Grant Cardone says. He says, you know, debt, being in debt is not your problem. That's not your issue. Your issue is you don't have enough cash flow. If you had more cash flow, if you made more sales, what would that do for your debt? And the answer is pretty simple. So how do you make more sales? Well, it depends on your closing rate ratio when, you know, as far as number of customers you talk to, um, to the number of people that do business with you. If, if you're not making enough sales, then you've got to increase your frequency. You got to increase your activity. You got to grow your pipeline. You got to talk to a lot more people. And that might mean that you need to do this. You need to be live streaming and doing it the right way. So you're not, you know, turning people away, turning people off, so to speak, alienating possible customers because you don't know what the hell you're doing. And that's where the birth of, 
um, Grow Live Academy came in is is I you know I had Jeffrey Gittimer and his wife going, dude, you need to start teaching people how to do this. I'm like, really? And they're like, yes, because I had Grant Cardone and Jeffrey Gittimer on a live stream with me together, all of us, all three of us. And it was that night afterwards, Jeffrey's wife called and said, dude, you need to do a course on this. Teach people how to do what you just did. Like people don't know how to do that. And so that's where the birth of, of Grow Alive Academy started because I had somebody tell me, um, you know, you, you, you got to do a, a celebrity tell me that. So, well, I am so glad that you did start it up because it had absolutely um, altered my life and changed my life in many ways. And the group of people that you have on Grow Live Academy um, are just amazing people. So one question that I wanted to um, ask, because, you know, I know for myself, I had struggled with many things in my mind, lots of insecurity, insecurities of starting a live show, you know, from yeah. I don't have the equipment, I don't know how to, use, I'm not techie, I don't know how to use all these things. And I know what you have told me and coached me on, but I'd really like for you to share, you know, how do we get past um, being unstuck like that? Cause it's, cause it's real easy to get stuck there for a long time and not have any movement. When, what, what do you mean stuck? Stuck where? Well, like stuck in not going for it, not, not doing the live coming up with all the, you know, reasons and it of, of not getting started. And okay. Uh, you ready? I have an answer. Yes. Yes. I'm ready. You're being selfish and self-centered. Me, 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 me. If you're sitting around going, oh, I don't know if I should do this. You're, all you're thinking about is you. You're not thinking about other people. If, if, if you are not going live, if you're not sharing your brilliance, your gift, your God-given talents with the freaking world, what are you hiding from? Grant Cardone asked me that question. What are you hiding from? Except for he put an, another F word in there. But he said, what the are you hiding from? And I said, nothing, man. I'm sitting in your office. I went and I was in his office for three hours. And and he's like, you're hiding from something, man. Why aren't you Why aren't you out here doing this and this and this and this and this? And this? I'm like, guys, I didn't know I could, you know, or whatever. I I I didn't have an answer. But you've got to you've got to get your foot off the brake of your life. Here's I here's a news flash for everybody listening or watching. You're going to die. You're gonna die. All of us, every single one of us. Your ego wants you to believe you're not going to die, but you're going to die. And if you, if you don't, if you don't get your, um, act, ask, ask Crystal Hanson, Mark Victor Hanson's wife said, you got to get your ask in gear. Like you got to start going for it, man. You got to get out of your way, get out of your head. If you're not sharing your gift with the world, you're being selfish. What if, what if, what if, maybe you have a gift of, of helping people, um, not jump off of a bridge. I don't know. Maybe you have a gift of, of baking the perfect cake or cookies, or you have a gift of, of, of being a great electrician or a plumber that can help people with their home projects or you have whatever it is. And you're not going live and sharing that gift with the world. Why? You're stealing from people. God gave you a gift to share with other people, not to keep it to yourself. And if you're going to keep it to yourself, then I, I don't think you're living in your purpose. So, you know, stop thinking about yourself. Start thinking about other people and you'll get you'll get unstuck. You. If, you, if you say I'm doing this for other people to help them and not to help me again, I, I can't stand people that, that make life and everything all about them and what's in it for them. I don't like being around those kind of people. And, and because that's not the way I live my life. I live my life to give and help other people. I charge, I get paid for it very well. Um, but I live to help other people. 
And that's, that's what it takes. You've got to go, okay, how do I help other people? How do I get other people, you know, uh, whatever my gift is, how do I help them receive that, learn that, whatever that thing is. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Cause that is definitely the revelation that I concluded the whole time was that I was selfish and certainly um, just within the few weeks of having American Dream Makers, I can now understand why you have the passion you have. So when people, if you are not part of Grow Live Academy, um, I really would encourage you to go check it, check it out because seriously, Ken has done an amazing job with the uh, courses that he's put in there. He's very detailed and he makes it very simple. So I put it in the chat for you guys. So growliveacademy.com. And uh, so, and if you feel free to reach out to Ken, he is such a nice guy. Ken, also another thing, we in business, we know that making connections is vital. Can you talk a little bit about that and, uh, you know, why it's vital and, and how we can do better with that? In Dr. Wayne Dyer's book, There's a Spiritual Solution to Every Problem, I believe it's that one. Maybe it was not. I don't know. Um, it was him, I believe, that said, spirituality cannot exist in a vacuum. Spirituality cannot exist in a vacuum. If you if if a, a baby was born on a on a remote island and then the mother died and the baby had to fend for itself and it was raised on that remote island all by itself, it would have no spiritual existence. It wouldn't understand spirituality. It may have feelings about it. But until it connects with another human being, there is no such thing. And, and that's what I've read. And that's kind of, it makes sense to me. Like, it just makes sense to me. If, if you're a spiritual being that's on this planet having a, a spiritual experience or a human experience as a spiritual being, like the, the, the only way you're going to increase or fulfill that is by connecting with other people. I I've lived in that lonely, dark place of not wanting to be around people of I, I'm a recovered alcoholic with 20 years sober. There were many, many, many times when I didn't want to be around people. I just wanted to sit at home alone, um, drinking and, um, didn't want anything to do with people when I had my spiritual awakening 20 over 20 years ago and, and realized that, wow, I, I really shouldn't be drinking like this. And I realized that I had a problem with it. And I realized that God had brought me to my knees to surrender. Um, I realized that I couldn't do it alone. And I had been trying to go alone for a long time. So I went to a fellowship and I, I got, got help and I connected with other people. And through those connections, I've connected with other people. And through those connections, I've connected with other people. And through those connections, I started realizing that, wow, I can connect with other people. And so I would just start reaching out to other people. And I'd say, hey, if you know a rock star celebrity that wants to be interviewed and gotten get more attention for whatever they're doing, send them my way. And the guy yesterday that I had on, again, I Igor was unbelievably amazing. And he was referred to me by a guy in Israel that I had on my show that's amazing, big celebrity guy with a huge global newsletter by the name of Itai. And, and he was, he was on my show a couple of years ago and now refers people to me that are giant rock stars. And, and so it just starts happening one person at a time, one person at a time. And, and as I've just continued to, to, to 
do it, it just keeps growing. And, and the more, like I can pick up the phone and call, I mean, literally just about anybody. Like I can get in touch with just about anyone. If you said, yeah, well, can you get in touch with the, the, the Prince of, of Dubai? Or I, I, I don't even know if there is a prince in Dubai, but, um, but whatever hierarchy power and du- yes, actually I could probably do that. Why? Um, because I had a girl on my show who's a very good friend of mine now that is the head of one of the largest resorts in all of Dubai. She's the main manager of this, this resort or something. And I know she knows people there. And so I would reach out to her and say, who do you know that could get me in touch with? Or maybe you already know the Prince. (laughs) I don't know. But like, uh, and I'm making, you know, just making up scenarios. But the the bottom line is, is I, I, I know, I know that we're all only one or two people away from, from whoever it is that we want, want to know. And I am like, I have, you know, Grant Cardone's cell phone number, Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for the Soul, the best number one bestselling author in the world. I have conversations with Mark all the time. That guy's sold over 500 million books. And I have, I have had multiple, I mean, he's a friend, a good friend. He put a chapter in his biography about my story about meeting him, a whole chapter. Like, I'm like, what? So, the best-selling author in the world has a chapter in his life story about me. Like what in the world is that all about? Like, how did that happen? And the way that it happened was this. I don't live my life for me. I live my life to help other people. And when you live your life to help other people and not, not just talk, there's so many people that are full of crap. Um, see, I stopped myself. They're full of it. They, they say they help people. They say they want to help people. But when it comes to the, the, the freaking your, your, um, what's the, what's the term, um, when the rubber meets the road, when it's time to actually help people, they become, Oh, now I'm going to lose money. If I give you money, I'm going to lose this. If I, they, they, they aren't thinking expansively. They're thinking contractually and as a return, uh, the return of thinking like everything's, you know, I got to protect it and save it and hoard it. And then they, they are typically living, you know, in a very, um, Hey Dennis, how you doing brother? It's good to see you. Um, you know, the, um, they live in a very limited world and, and, and in a lot of fear and it's terrible. Yes. Uh, well, and that's great, Dennis, that you're joining us from China. It just shows that you do have fans all over the world. <laughs> oh, I, Dennis awesome. isn't a fan. He's a friend. He's a good dude. <laughs> Super well, good. He, I met him through Glenn Morris Hour, actually. Um, awesome. And, and that's the way that it works. Like, you know, we, we're, we're one connection away from having a completely different life and, and, it's, it's what I teach. It's what I teach, like literally in Grow Live Academy. <laughs> it is what you teach. So yeah. have you found, so that, you know, we got networking groups locally, uh, communities that you go, you know, meet each other uh, in person. Do you find that go, going live and doing your podcast, is that more effective in meeting people? Um, I think they can work in tandem with one another. You know, here's the bottom line. Dennis, I can call Dennis a friend, but we've never met in life. Never. I've never even had a conversation like this on video with him. We've, We've only gotten to know each other through his comments, him commenting on my live streams or me and Glenn's live streams, right? And he's right. Who you know is always more important than what you know. And I'll take it a step further. Who knows you is more important than who you know. Like, <clears throat> I'll use Grant or Mark or my buddy Ramy, the billionaire, and Ramy Albatrawi. If you ask any of them, do you know Ken Walls? The answer would be, of course I know Ken. He's a friend of mine. 
It's that simple. And, and how many people could you ask those same three people? Do you know who so-and-so is? And they're going to say, never heard of them. <laughs> like, right. So it, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's so important to make sure. And the reason those, the, those three that I named would know who I am is I've gone way out of my way, way out of my way, investing my own money, my own time, everything into helping them get more attention, helping them move the needle in their lives, helping them ring the cash register in their business. And when you do that, it's Zig Ziglar saying, let me see if I can find this. And ironically, all of Zig's kids are friends of mine. Um, Tom and Julie and Cindy are amazing human beings and I can't find it. I have it somewhere. The, um, Zig's little book of big quotes, but the very first page, it's this tiny little booklet. I don't know where the heck it is. I got to find that. Um, but it's this tiny little booklet and the very first page is Zig's one of his most famous quotes. And that is you can have everything you want out of life if you just help enough other people get what they want out of life. It's the truth. And when we all start living like that, instead of in this self-centered, selfish society society and, and paradigm that we've all created of the world that we live in, um, it'll be a much better planet to live on when we start thinking about how we can help other people instead of help ourselves. Great. That's great advice. And, and you definitely live that you are not just a talker. You absolutely live that Ken. And I, I know, cause you, we've texted late at night before and I'm like, I can't believe he's still up because your, your, your time zone is way ahead of mine. So I uh, really appreciate you. And you, you absolutely have changed many, many lives. Um, you know, that I know of. For Thank sure. you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. The other thing that I'd, I'd like to, I guess, for you to let us know. So social media, there's a lot of power in social media. Can you tell us why there's a lot of power in social media and why we really should be going live on social media? Yes. <clears throat> um, first, social media is it fulfills um, one basic well, a couple of human needs, necessities. Um, I believe that one of those necessities is voyeurism, as, as weird as that sounds. Um, we we like to see what other people are up to. Like, uh, what's Zena doing? What's she up to? I want to see what she's up to. And, and then what's Jose doing? Oh, let's see what Jose's up to. And then what's Grant Cardone doing? I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to call him. I'm just going to look, look here and see what he's doing. And and so it fulfills that basic human desire or need that we have to see what everybody else is up to. Um, the other thing that it does is you you know what the herd mentality is, right? The herd effect um, means that, you know, we all, we all tend to congregate where everybody else is. We all tend to go with the flow, go where to go, where the herd is. Not everybody, um, but a huge, huge, huge percentage of people. Um, so social media, <coughs> excuse me, social media is, um, it's unbelievably important from the perspective of where else are you going to find everybody? Where's everybody hanging out? Like, uh, you're going to go out clubbing to every city in the world to meet these people, or maybe you just learn how to use social media better. Um, so you can get your message out and, um, and, and touch more lives, have a bigger impact. There's Joaquin from hell. He's joining us from hell and, and like literally, and it snows in hell, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I've never thought of Norway as being hell, but wow. <laughs> no, it's a city. It's literally, oh. it's a city in Norway called hell. Okay. You okay. got to follow Joaquin because he's, he does videos. And I commented on the post of his the other day, all this snow. And I'm like, well, Joaquin, it appears that hell has once again frozen over. 
<laughs> because it was frozen. It's called, it's yeah, it's crazy. So, so, um, that, that right there. I mean, I know Joaquin, Joaquin's part of the grow live family. I know Jose's in California, but he's part of the grow live family. You're in Arizona, but you're part of the grow live family. Like I, he said, hell's finally warming up, but the, you know, the, all of these people are in my life and in my world because of social media. That wouldn't be otherwise. You wouldn't know who I am. I wouldn't know who you are. So you got to learn how to use it. And you got to use the heck out of it. Another story that Grant tells, I got to tell this story. Guy comes into his office back in like 2010. And he says, Grant, we're losing followers on Twitter. And Grant's like, oh, what, what's, what's the problem? He's like, well, um, they say you're posting too much. He's like, well, how many times am I posting? And eight or nine or 10 times a day right now. He's like, okay, all right. So here's the solution. Tomorrow, we're going to start posting 30 or 40 times a day. But Grant, I just told you, I know what you told me. I know what you told me. Those aren't my customers. Those aren't my customers and they'll be back. So, you know, it's all Teodora. I love Teodora. She's part of the Grow Live family too. Um, but, you know, the um, it's, it's about frequency. Again, look, if you're really extremely busy already and you can't handle any more business and you're already making hundreds of millions of dollars and you're good and you don't need to grow anymore, then don't do any of this stuff. Stay where you are, whatever. I, like, I'm not telling anybody you have to do anything. I'm saying if you want to get more attention, you want to make more money, you want to want to make a bigger impact in the world because it, it's not all about money at all. It's, it's not about money at all, actually. It's about what impact you're making. The bigger the impact you make, ironically, the more money you're going to make. It's weird the way that works. But when you help more people, God, the universe, whatever you want to refer to God as shows up and helps you. It's, it's, it's a, I brought this up to Don last night on the Amazon live. I carry, I have this laying on my desk, Malachi three, 10 through 12 says, bring the whole tithe and offering into my storehouse that there may be food for my children. Test me in this way, says the Lord almighty and see if I will not throw open gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing you won't have enough room to store it all that sounds like an awful lot to me i mean i hey we got way too many cars and too much food we can't store all of it let's give some of this stuff away and and but yet people don't get that that's the the tithe and offering isn't just about what you write a check for to your local church or synagogue or whatever the tithe and the offering is about what are you giving to the world if you have a message if you've recovered from cancer if you've it, it doesn't matter what it is you have a message that somebody needs to hear somebody needs to hear and the more you give that message to other people the greater the impact you're going to make the greater the impact you're going to make in the world is going to impact you and future generations in your family see wow. the big look at it from a big picture stop looking at it from this tiny ass little i'm just this little tiny little molecule that exists down here on the planet cuz you're more than that you're not that. You're so much bigger than that. But people like to play small. If you play small, you don't run the risk of getting hurt. Which is actually not even true. Because you're going to go to your grave with your music still in you. And that's freaking sad. Yes, that is. Thank you. Preach it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. That was a, done it. with a lot of passion and you know, whatever uh, is, is in the heart comes out of the mouth and you definitely have a lot of passion and you do have a lot of love for people and mm -hmm. uh, appreciate it so much. You are making a huge difference in the world. You are definitely an American dream maker. And I, I just can't even thank you enough. Can I mean, just 
the confidence that you help to build in people. Pretty amazing. Uh, so one of the other things, just, just real quickly here, I, I do want to touch, touch on part of the making connections. You have this digital card that uh, you do for people. It's pretty phenomenal. It's better than any other digital card I have seen. Can you tell us why it's so different? Um, so this is mine. You have one. You got one from I do. me, right? So yeah. I listen, I didn't, I, I, and I've said this, I don't know how many times I did not create this to make a business out of it. I was paying another company. I had paid them for five, six years, another company, 10, 20 bucks a month for this, this thing that never worked right. 50% of the time or more, it didn't work when I would give it to people, the link to people. And so finally I was like, you know what? Enough. I get, I was on a zoom meeting. This is a year ago. Actually it was almost exactly a year ago. Um, cause I, I created this in May, I believe of last year. And so I told this lady on zoom, just go to Ken's bizcard.com and check it out. And she was like, um, it's not working. And I go, what do you mean it's not working? She's like, it's on this other, it's some, other, what's this other website? And she told him, I'm not going to mention the name because it was the, the parent company. And I said, Ugh! I said, I'll just text you the information. Lori, thank you. Um, I'll just text you my info. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'll, I'll never give that out again. And, and I just, I was really ticked off and I went to lunch at Chipotle and I'm standing in line. Don't judge. I'm standing in line at Chipotle and I go, I'm, I'm just pissed. It's part of my language, but I'm just like pissed off. Like I've spent all this money and the stupid thing doesn't even work. What is going on? And, and so I'm like, wait a minute, you've been in technology for 30 years, dude. What's wrong with you? Just make your own. I'm like, I'll make my own. That's what I'll do. I'm going to make my own. And so I go back and I spend the next, um, it's, uh, oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm, I go, I, I go back to home to my, sit down at my desk, eat my Chipotle. And the whole time I'm thinking, how could I make my own? How could I make my own? Spend the next two or three days perfecting it. And what, here's the difference. So everybody has seen, um, let me find one. Here's one. Jeez. Buried, of course. Everybody has seen your standard business card, right? There's one from Nebraska Furniture Mart. I'm covering up the guy's name because why do that? But this is the manager, the manager of Nebraska Furniture Mart. Massive company that Warren Buffett owns. And, and, and I have his card, right? Now, I only kept his card to use as an example of what you shouldn't be doing because what happens to 95 to 99% of most business cards that you're handed at a conference or in a meeting? You can answer. Thrown away. It gets thrown away or buried yeah. or lost. Exactly. Right. So that's a big problem. And then there's other digital business cards out there, but the problem most digital business cards have is they don't create any sort of engagement with the person that has your card. Right now, anybody watching, if you go to kensbizcard.com on your phone, it won't work on a computer. It, it just doesn't work right on a computer. So we made it phone only. Go to, go to it on your, your smartphone. Fill out the form down there that says, shoot me a text. You're automatically going to receive an ebook called 100 Livestream Secrets and Ideas that I wrote a few years ago, incredibly popular. It's been downloaded thousands and thousands and thousands of times. You need to go grab that thing right now and look at it. It'll give you ideas on how to live stream and some secrets in there too. And now we can have a conversation because you're going to be in my CRM and I can communicate with you now. I can text you. I can email you. I can do all the things. If you used any other digital business card and they tap your phone with it, because you literally can tap somebody's phone 
with this digital business card, your link pops up and they tap it and they can go check out your card. They can save it to their phone. They could uh, at the bottom of it. There's now a, another feature. Zena, I don't even know if I've told you about this yet at the bottom of my card. Now, um, if you scroll down and I'm adding it as quick as I can to everybody's it's some, it took me almost a full year to figure this out. And that is there's a button at the bottom of my card that says share this card and you click it in the share menu, the native share menu on the iPhone and the Android pops up and you can text it. You can use whatever methods you use in that share thing. So um, I just figured that code out. It took me almost a year. It was crazy. So, you know, I'm always looking for ways to improve whatever it is that I'm doing for my clients. Um, and, and, and it's a, that's a huge improvement because now anybody that has your digital business card can click share the, my card and they can share you to their friends <clears throat> or family, <clears throat> excuse me. So it's amazing. <clears throat> it's an amazing it, card. It is an amazing card and I've been using it and people are impressed when they see it because it, nobody yeah. else has a card like it. No. And then when they see it on their phone, they're like, wow, like I said, it, it stands out above any of the other digital cards. So yeah, you guys, if you don't have one, you definitely want to talk to Ken and get him to, it, it's, it's honestly so inexpensive for the, for the business that you, you bring in. It's, it's well worth it. And he doesn't even charge enough. And, and, <laughs> and it's, it's custom designed. Everything is custom designed on the card. Everything. And Joaquin Chat GPT actually solved the problem for me. Well, partially, I had to. If if I if it weren't for the fact that I'm a programmer, it wouldn't have worked <clears throat> because um, I had to modify the code. But it gave me the base code, which was good, <clears throat> very very good. So you know, look, <clears throat> there's um, again, there's a million ways to skin a cat. And, and for me, I'm like with this, this digital business card thing, I I'm always, and I charge a one-time fee and you get full access to a CRM and everything else that comes with it. So, um, you can't get, and that's a $97 a month CRM minimum. And I give it to everybody that signs up right now for free. I'm, I changed the pricing. Um, and to a monthly fee. And then somebody said, Oh my God, last night, literally somebody else is signing up. Can you please just give me the, the one-time fee of seven forty seven So we don't have the monthly fee involved. I'm like, all right, I changed it back last night. I literally went and changed it back. You can look this up to see the last time it was modified on who dot is, and it'll show that I modified it last night. W H O dot I S. Um, but it's $747 one time, and that includes the custom design of the card. That includes text message marketing, email marketing, video embeds, all kinds of stuff that you you just wouldn't. It's unbelievable. So go check it out. It's on digitalcardpros.com is where you can check it out. Bob Donnell, love you, brother. Thank you for um, jumping on here, man. Um, Bob Donnell's unbelievable that guy that's who introduced me to mark victor hansen that's who introduced me to glenn moore shower bob is is the man he's the connector of all connectors for real wow that's yeah. great thank you for being on here bob really appreciate yeah. really appreciate all of you joining us today it's been a fantastic live show today and can again Thank you from the bottom of my heart for you being here. You have blessed many people I can see on here and definitely share this out. You guys, Ken's message needs to get out. Like he said, he's got, he has a passion to want to help people. So let's get this out so that more people can be helped so that their business can grow. And so I put in the chat how you can get a hold of Ken and he is so easily accessible. So Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Bob is amazing. He. Thank you. He's so humble. He does way more for others than I do. And listen, Bob Donnell is so connected. He's like, like I just named off Mark Victor Hansen, Glenn Moore shower, um, Kasim. He introduced me to Kasim, um, that was on my show. I mean, he's introduced me to all kinds of, 
and I'm not, I mean, these are all huge celebrities that he's introduced me to. Bob is an amazing human being. Amazing. I love you, dude. Uh, he's just a good dude. And he's part of the Grow Live family. So, um, awesome. yeah. So anyway, sorry, I'm, I interrupted you. Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is all about you, Ken, not about me. So, well, <laughs> we're at that. an hour, so we can, we can <laughs> wrap it up. So thank you so much, Zena. I really appreciate you having me on and congratulations. Well done. You're doing it. And you're doing it very, 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 very well. I mean, you really are killing it. Your show, I have a feeling, is going to be joining me or surpassing mine in the very near future. Well, thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate you so much. You are an absolutely great coach and friend and mentor. So, thank you. Um, again, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you soon. You guys get a hold of Ken, okay? All right. We'll talk to you thank soon, you. Ken. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, please absolutely share this. Let's get Ken's message out and we will chat later. Have a good one.